In this video, we're going to take a look at the bridge tool. We're going to use the bridge tool to create an iron fence of sorts. And what the bridge is going to offer us is a great way for connecting open edges to other open edges. Caveat here is that they must be on the same surface or of the same model. So we cannot connect between multiple surfaces. And let's take a look at how we would get this done. I already have a post started here and fairly basic geometry, just all polygon geometry. And I'll take this and I want to duplicate this over to this side over here. And I'm going to use duplicate special. And let's examine this just a little bit that I have a couple of holes cut out into my fence post. And I want those holes to be inverted to the other side. I need them to be over here when I duplicate my model. So we're going to duplicate with special and take the scale and set it to a negative one. And that's just going to invert my geometry and allow those holes to be flipped. So we'll choose duplicate special. And we're doing this across the X axis. We can see that there in world space. So we'll just invert, duplicate special, and we'll hit W. And I'm going to snap to grid and just drag that out here. And we'll zoom up to that duplicate and see that there. Now I have those holes going on the other side as we have a duplicate that has just basically been inverted. Okay, so now I cannot do a bridge across these two because they are separate nodes, they're separate models. But if I choose Mesh, Combine, now that is going to place them all into a single node. And now I can do a bridge across here. To do my bridge, I want to select a set of open edges or border edges. So I'll double click to get that row and we'll scoot over to the other side here. I'll hold shift, double click and select that row of edges. And now I can go to edit mesh and choose bridge. And let's open the tool options. We just want to make sure that we're using the defaults here. So we'll just reset the settings. And we'll come back to what all of these options here do for us. And we'll choose bridge. And now that will connect those two border edges and fill it in with extra geometry. Let's do this again. Let's select the next hole down. Now hold shift, double click, and that'll grab that border. Now I have the border on either side there selected. I'll choose edit mesh, go to bridge. Let's open those options. And for this one, I want to add extra divisions. I want a total of 48 divisions, but when I go in there and try to type, it doesn't let me. This tool or the divisions part of this tool actually caps out right there at 26. So I can hit 25, can't hit 26. So I'm going to leave that. We'll just leave that set to a divisions right now of five and we'll choose bridge. Then once it's created over in the channel box, I have my node here. I can click on the divisions, same thing that we just were looking at up there in the tool options, but here I can actually type 48 and get the number that I'm after. So we'll just choose those defaults from now on, or for the most part, we'll actually change some in here in a little bit, but we'll just use those defaults and then type what we need over here in the channel box. Works a lot better and we'll just hit enter. And now I get those 48 divisions, but I'm also getting something else that's happening here is when those divisions were created, they did not get assigned to my default shader. So they're showing up just in wireframe, but they are not showing up in shaded view. And if I click off and just go to object mode and we'll turn off wireframe on shaded, you can see that they basically are invisible there. But if I select they definitely have a wireframe. They have geometry. They're just not being assigned to the shader properly. We can fix this very quickly by just right mouse clicking on our object and choose assign existing material. And we'll just throw it right back onto Lambert one. Now that's going to happen periodically. We can actually let that go. And sometimes it'll actually correct itself as we go through, but we'll take a look here. Let's just continue. And we're going to add another bridge down to the bottom. We'll grab our edge loops. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did to the top. I'm gonna to add my bridge. We'll use the defaults and change those divisions to match the top. And we'll just take that up to 48. This time, shader was applied properly. 
no disappearing geometry there. All right, now let's create some bars in between those divisions that we just made. I'm going to select a face on top and a face on bottom and delete those so I have two opposing border edges there. I'll go to Edge, select that one, select that one, and we'll add our default bridge. Again, real easy just to get a nice connecting geometry between two open holes. Let's go on to the next one here and we'll select faces. We'll grab that one and its opposing face on the other side or on the top and we'll delete those faces. I'm going to hit delete on the keyboard and that'll get rid of those and that's going to open that up to a border edge. I'll double click to select both sets of border edges. And this time, let's go back into our options and go to my bridge. And we're going to choose to do a smooth path this time. And we'll leave the rest there at their defaults. And we'll choose bridge. Now, there's just a slight difference between the two. It's now blending through here. And the spacing of those divisions is a little bit different. And that's because of that blend that we're doing. Now, when we do the blend, this opens up some extra options for us in our attribute editor. Here's my curve type, and this is what we just set to blend or that smooth. I'm going to set it back to linear. And when I do that, it then closes out my twisting and my taper. So when we do a smooth transition or blend, we're allowed to use those twist and taper options. So I'm going to leave it on blend now, and I'll take my twist. And I'm going to type my own value in there, and I'm going to go pretty high here. We're going to do 720 for our twist, and then go back up, and let's add 20 divisions to support that twist that we just added. And now we get a nice-looking shape there. Let's turn off our wireframe on shaded, and we can see. And now when we do that as well, the smoothing angle is set to 30. So we're getting what appears to be faceting or just hard edges there. I'm going to choose to select this poly bridge node, which will then free up the selection out here so we can see what is actually going to happen here. And I'll go back to this smoothing angle and let's just crank this up and then it will smooth out. And that's a little bit too much. There we go right there. So now we have a nice smoothing going on the inside faces while the outside edges there are still hard. So it gives us a nice twisted look to the model. And we'll just type in just a round number in there. And let's do the same thing to the next bar. We'll go to faces, select two opposing faces, choose delete, go to edges, grab those border edges, edit mesh, bridge, make sure we're on blend, Set our divisions to 20. We'll add a 720 degree twist, and we'll change that smoothing angle to soften those edges. All right, there we go.